Welcome to another edition of the Apostasy Report. My name is Joshua. Today we are going to be talking about Calvary Chapel. The Calvary Chapel movement, a uh, lot to cover, and uh, it's, it's dizzying how much there is to talk about. Uh, Calvary Chapel started in the mid-60s, founded by Chuck Smith, for those that don't know, uh, th thrived and was um, one of the if not the driving force behind what's commonly referred to as the Jesus movement. A lot of hippies were being saved at the time, and no doubt a lot of good came from that. I have no doubt that many, many people were saved as a result of the work that was taking place at the time. Um, they started meeting in tents initially, a lot of baptisms in the ocean. Uh, this was uh, in uh, California. It's now since spread uh, to other parts of the United States, but uh, Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa was the flagship uh, church, and uh, that was founded by Chuck Smith. Uh, there were controversies even early on. Um, one of the, for lack of a better term, big draws at the time was a gentleman by the name of Lonnie Frisbee. Lonnie Frisbee um, kind of had the Jesus look going on, the long hair thing, and uh, was something of uh, the Calvary Chapel evangelist. He was kind of the um, the one bridging the gap with the younger hippies at the time, and uh, Chuck Smith, kind of the main teacher. Uh, well, it came out later that uh, not only was Lonnie Frisbee uh, dropping acid and things of this sort while he was evangelizing people, but he was apparently living an openly gay lifestyle, eventually contracted age, and tragically passed away. Gosh, I, I don't remember the date exactly. Maybe the mid-80s, possibly the early 90s. Uh, be that as it may, at some point Chuck Smith uh, removed him from Calvary Chapel uh, due to these uh, problems, which is a good thing. Uh, another gentleman uh, that was involved with Calvary Chapel in the late eighties, uh, late seventies, sorry, into the early eighties, was a name by uh, a gentleman by the name of Bill Wimber, John, sorry, John Wimber. John Wimber influenced Bill Johnson, uh, who ended up founding uh, Bethel Church of Redding, California. So John Wimber was into the signs and wonders movement. Um, I believe he founded uh, what was later known as. Joshua's Vineyard or the Vineyard Movement. Uh, likewise, Chuck Smith removed him from Calvary Chapel, which is a good thing because John Wimber was more focused on signs and wonders than he was the written Word of God. So just a little brief history. There's so much uh, I can't possibly uh, cover all of this in detail. This would be a five-hour video easily. Uh, but just a little bit of backstory. Uh, Calvary chapels are generally known for verse-by-verse -verse teaching. They are not uh, into replacement theology. They tend to be generally pro-Israel, um, attention to biblical prophecy, and, and certain other good things. Um, I, as a young believer, had my start in a Calvary chapel. Right. Some people have uh, talked about uh, the Calvary Chapel tattoo on my neck. It, this it, It's incidental. It's a coincidence anyway. Um, it's just a dove. Uh, by the way, I don't promote tattoos, and I don't suggest you get one. Um, but it is a coincidence that I did have a start in a Calvary Chapel and then also happen to have a dove tattoo. Uh, Calvary Chapel did not invent the dove, uh, but that's just as a side note because I know somebody's going to bring it up. Anyway, I did have a start uh, in a Calvary Chapel. Uh, Calvary Chapel in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, led by Skip Heitzig. And uh, I was involved with that uh, particular church for a few years, and uh, there's plenty to say about it. So, let's let's begin. Uh, Chuck Smith passed away 2013, and um, that caused something of a rift. There was growing tension, and a lot of people within the Calvary spectrum behind the scenes were vying for the opportunity to take over the flagship church in Costa Mesa. Um, like a bunch of desperate vultures, there were people that were um, really excited to uh, take over where Chuck Smith was going to leave off. 
uh, as as happens in in families and things like this. Well, anyway, um, people associated uh, with the movement, even Chuck Smith's own brother Paul uh, Paul Smith, um, and guys like Roger Oakland, were beginning to see trends within the Calvary Chapel movement that were troubling to them. And at some point they left. There's an article here, a tale of two Calvary chapels behind the movement's split. Um, Smith's son-in-law and successor at California flagship Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, Brian Broderson, who married Chuck's daughter, Cheryl, uh, left the Calvary Chapel Association this past fall. This was 2017. uh, This article was written 2017. He left in fall of 2016. The Calvary Chapel Association, he says, as I look at the current situation within Calvary Chapel, I don't see this separation as negative, but rather as necessary for God's work to be expanded, announced Broderson, who launched a broader, looser body focused on international missions called the Calvary Chapel Global Network. Other uh, Calvary chapels did not see this as a positive thing, um, saying, let's see here, who, who said this? Uh, Pastor Chuck left us a glorious legacy, yet the new Calvary Chapel Global Network established by Brian Broderson now threatens that legacy. The Calvary Chapel Association uh, Council stated in late November, such a network will ultimately de-emphasize our Calvary Chapel distinctives and will cause confusion. So Brian Broderson took over the flagship church in Costa Mesa, uh, which Chuck Smith owned, um, also owned as a K-Wave Radio by Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa properties. Uh, I mean, it's a massive, you know, it's a massive entity. And uh, growing tensions, some of it doctrinal, some of it just pure bitterness. There's, There's other people who... Uh, may not have agreed with certain elements of Broderson's doctrine, but were more bitter that they didn't get the opportunity to take over the church. Broderson decides to leave the Calvary Chapel Association. He says, I don't see this as a negative thing. Other members of the Calvary Chapel Association did. So now you have two Calvary chapels, so to speak, or two two roads of Calvary chapels. You have the Calvary Chapel Glo- Global Network over here and the Calvary Chapel association over here. Well, there's an article here by Lighthouse uh, Trails Research. California Church disaffiliates with Calvary Chapel movement over heretical connections. As many of you know, Roger Oakland of Understanding the Times International and Chris Lawson of Spiritual Research Network are former Calvary Chapel pastors and teachers who both left the movement when their warnings about the infiltration of serious false teaching fell on deaf ears for several years, and when they could no longer in good conscience remain associated with the movement. Last week, Lighthouse Trails was informed of another Calvary Chapel pastor, Steve Shively of Refuge, Refuge, uh, Refuge, <laughs> sorry, Refuge uh, Church in Anacus, wow, at a, at a Scadero, California, I don't know, who has made the decision along with his church elders to disaffiliate from the Calvary Chapel movement. The following letter was sent to the Calvary Chapel Association on June 29th of 2014. Here's that letter. If you can't read, read it, it's a, it's a little bit hazy, but <clears throat> it says, let's zoom in a little bit more. Dear Calvary Chapel Association, After many months of prayer and consideration, the Board of Elders at Refuge Church has unanimously voted to disaffiliate from Calvary Chapel. We have come to the conclusion that certain Calvary chapels are changing and moving in a direction that we do not want to go or be a part of as an affiliate. This is not a judgment on the intents of on, on the intents or hearts of other Calvary Chapel pastors or their churches, but rather Refuge Church staying true to our own convictions and to Scripture. 
The elders board concluded that we can no longer be affiliated with a movement which, in our view, has certain leaders and pastors that are embracing, promoting, and partnering with teachers of heresy, and in some cases apostasy. Some of these teachers being embraced, promoted, and partnered with include Rick Warren, who among other blatant heresies has called Christian fundamentalism a great enemy of the 21st century. William P. Young, who denies the substitutionary atonement of Jesus Christ on the cross for sinners. Uh, that's the author of The Shack. Brother Lawrence, a deceased Catholic mystic who taught unbiblical contemplative prayer derived from pagan Eastern religions. People like uh, Beth Moore have been heavily influenced by Brother Lawrence. Carl Lentz. Carl Lentz, a word of faith pastor who refuses to take a stand against the sin of homosexuality. Carl Lentz is one of the premier speakers in the Hillsong movement. He leads uh, Hillsong New York City under the leadership of Brian Houston. In Ephesians 5.11, we have been given a biblical mandate to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. The deliberate embracing, promotion of, and partnering with these and other teachers of heresy is opposed to what we have been called to in Scripture. Sadly, as well, over the years, we have seen a continued lack of accountability and gross abuse of the Moses model of church government within certain Calvary chapels, both locally and nationally. This is not to say that there is a perfect church government. There's not. All churches are ultimately led by flawed men, men or congregation, uh, men or congregation who can only govern correctly if they are being led by the Lord and are striving to be submitted to the Lord in their personal lives. With that said, the Moses model with no accountability is very dangerous. This is not said as a judgment on anyone's heart, but rather is offered in loving admonition after observing the fruit of multiple gross abuses of finance power, and sexual sin. The Moses model is uh, what Calvary Chapel refers to as their form of church government is exactly what it sounds like. The senior pastor operates as Moses did in the Old Testament with the children of Israel. Uh, unfortunately for them and for everybody subjected to that form of leadership, they have to appeal to Moses because you will find no such thing in the New Testament. Moses is a type of Christ not a type of a pastor in the New Testament. So uh, they've hearkened back to the Old Testament um, to substantiate and build up what can and often does turn into a tyrannical form of church government. Whatever Moses says goes. Uh, one, of, one of the more diatrophetic means of church government uh, I've ever heard of. Um, and he alludes to finances, power, sexual sin, etc. People like Bob Coy, who were very big in the Calvary Chapel movement, Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale, at one time was the largest evangelical church in North America. Bob Coy was found to be a serial adulterer, was later fired from the church, I mean, mostly due to public relations when people found out even, even Moses had to be dethroned. He then began working at a nightclub called the Funky Biscuit, then charges of molestation of a 13-year-old girl emerged. The, the whole thing is uh, quite a spectacle. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with Bob Coy at this point, but uh, it's not the first time that something like this has happened in a Calvary Chapel. Our aim at the end of the day is to be able to lie down with a clear conscience before God. We would be sinning against our consciences if we continued as a Calvary Chapel affiliate. Let me say that again. We would be sinning against our consciences if we continued as a Calvary Chapel affiliate. Our prayers will continue to be with the Calvary Chapel churches. We've enjoyed rich fellowship with other Calvary Chapel churches and pastors in the past and hope, and, uh, hope that may continue in the future. As brothers in the Lord, not as an affiliated church, we are also very grateful for the many Calvary Chapel distinctives, especially verse-by-verse -verse Bible teaching in which we will always continue at Refuge Church. Sincerely, Steve Shively. 
the heart of the matter is they were seeing trends of embracing, partnering with, and promoting heresy and or apostasy. He only names four. Many more could be stated. Uh, Carl Lentz is one specific element, but the entire Hillsong movement is being embraced by Calvary Chapel. Uh, so this is a very direct and pointed letter. The form of church government, though problematic, uh, wasn't the driving force, but certainly a very rele relevant, um, uh, relevant uh, side topic. But it's the heresy that was being embraced and promoted. This is what's been going on. Now, this was, uh, you know, four and a half years ago at this point. But the apostasy train has not slowed, so let's get into it. Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa, the flagship of the Calvary Chapel movement for years, headed by Chuck Smith, now taken over by Brian Broderson. Brian Broderson, the senior pastor, and all his people. This uh, Cheryl Broderson is Chuck Smith's daughter. And it's no wonder that he took over. Again, a lot of people were bitter about it, even those that might not have cared about his, you know, uh, doctrinal proclivities. Money does funny things to people. The Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa uh, Church also runs the this site here, CalvaryChapel.com, which, as you can see, has the global network that Brian Houston, I mean Brian Broderson sought to establish. Among ministries uh, promoted here, or outreach efforts promoted, would be Harvest America, Greg Laurie's endeavor, and the Whosoever's movement. There's a lot, there's a few others here, but um, we're going to focus on uh, just a couple for now. Um, the Whosoever's movement. All right. Uh, first of all, okay, this is, this is the one the one fork of Calvary Chapel. You've got Brian Broderson and the Costa Mesa and the Global Network. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have the Calvary Chapel Association, which is supposed to be the guys that were going in the right direction, right? The good guys, for lack of a better term. So who do we have leading up the Calvary Chapel Association? You've got, and we're only going to focus on a few because this would take all day. Uh, Raul Reese, very big name. There's Pastor Raul Reese. Jack Hibbs, another big name. Let's look at our some of our regional directors of the Southwest. We've got Skip Heitzig, another big name, who uh, was one of the one of Chuck Smith's converts, uh, probably in the mid to late seventies, somewhere in that area. Friend of Greg Laurie, a native Californian. These are the three that we're going to focus on. These are three of the prominent leaders within the Calvary Chapel Association. Uh, from which Brian Broderson split. Okay. Raul Reese, Jack Hibbs, Skip Heitzig. Okay. So it says here the whosoevers are promoted by Brian Broderson, which is interesting because the whosoevers is a movement founded by Raul Reese's son. And remember, Raul Reese is on the other fork of Calvary Chapel, or so it would appear. You're going to see how quickly these lines will converge again. Raul Reese's son, Ryan Reese, is a co-founder of uh, this movement called the Whosoever's, uh, which is very into uh, rock music, skateboarding, and uh, a whole lot of merchandising. Here's, here's Ryan Reese on CBN. That's usually a dead giveaway. If you just listen to what Jesus really preached, Love your neighbor as yourself. It's all about love. Like Paul says, you know, if you do it all without love, it's a clinging symbols. Through love, then natural conversations will happen. Then Jesus will come up and you just love people into the kingdom. So Ryan Reese just loves people into the kingdom. You're not going to find that anywhere in your Bible. Jesus didn't just love people into the kingdom. He preached truth to them. Peter, John the Baptist, and Jesus all said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what love looks like. Love will have 
words of truth behind it. But uh, you will see the superficiality of all of this uh, grow. Ryan Reese um, and this whosoever's movement is comprised of uh, a, several people, but most notably a gentleman by the name of Brian Head Welch, the former and then reintroduced and current guitar player for the band Korn. It was a big story in about 2005. Uh, Korn's guitar player, Korn is a very worldly rock band. Uh, Korn's guitar player leaves the band and finds Jesus. Uh, and it sounded like a good thing, right? What, what an awesome story of redemption and somebody being saved from their sins. And so uh, it wasn't long before the vultures in the uh in the christian industry uh you know wanted to make merchandise of this great story and and whatnot so uh books and marketing ensue and now brian welch is a conference uh circuit speaker at at multiple uh, churches uh well he became quickly affiliated with many questionable and some outright heretical teachers uh such as benny hinn such as a guy named John Crowder, who says you can smoke the Holy Ghost. Such as uh, Todd White, uh, Dreadlock uh, Todd White, who's part of the New Apostolic Reformation. He's a false teacher, through and through. Uh, I think he was part of the Holy Ghost film, which uh, Todd White was an inter integral part of. Well, anyway, that's Ryan Reese's friend. As you can see, he's sitting behind a K-Wave micro uh, microphone, and K-Wave is owned by... Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, Brian Broderson. Lots to discuss, but let's start here. Man, look at I have you on here. I want to get a good interview out of you. Brian Reese, right now, <laughs> ryan-reese.com. <laughs> You're listening. You're on video, too. You know You're that, listening right? to Head, Brian Head Welch, right now, the sinner who went back to corn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Thank so this is where they're at now. Um, it's, it's sad and it's unfortunate. I don't want to root against him. I'd much rather this guy be saved. Uh, but even he and his cavalier friend, Mr. Reese, son of Raul Reese, joke, joke about it, mock about it. Um, he's scoffing at himself, uh, the sinner who went back to corn, which perturbed a lot of people, right? He got saved. So he said, came out of this garbage worldly band and then he blamed jesus for telling him to go back he said no jesus told me to follow him back to the band as if this was some kind of jonah nineveh situation which it most certainly was not it was a money situation um something of the epitome of putting your hand to the plow and then looking back so it's unfortunate um and, and nobody should gloat in that but th this man is hardly somebody who should be teaching anybody else right he is um He's popular and he draws a crowd, so a lot of people want to talk to him. He, and he says that God sent him back to the band to, you know, witness to the band members uh, while they do debauched things on stage and sing all manner of ungodly music. Well, him and Ryan Reese joke about it uh, because they have no scruples. That's the discretion of Ryan Reese and the whosoevers. Here's Ryan Reese. Uh, when was this? Uh what year was it? I think it was 2016. Um, this is at the Azusa Now Conference hosted by Lou Engel, heretic extraordinaire of The Call. At this particular event, Lou Engel literally bowed down before two Catholic priests and started groveling at their feet and kissing their shoes literally kissing the shoes of Catholic priests and apologizing, begging and pleading forgiveness for the division and disunity that had been caused as a result and perpetuated uh, by the reformers. Then he urged everyone that we need to unite with our Catholic brothers, that uh, there's, no, there's no need for this useless division. Please forgive us. That's what happened there. A groveling a uh, pandering ecumenist and heretic, Lou Engel, uh, was bowing and kissing the feet of Catholics. Ryan Reese's assessment? Ryan Reese says, I went up to the call on Saturday before my radio show, and it was beyond epic. 
It was a giant prayer meeting for a revival at the L.A. Coliseum. I had to see it for myself. Hashtag pray hard. Hashtag whosoever's the whosoever's movement. Beyond epic. It was epic, but it was an epic failure and an epic display of blasphemy, effectively, um, to, to in, in God's name, say that uh, God wants us to reunite with the harlot church of Rome while you're kissing the feet of um, little antichrists uh, is certainly epic, but it's epically disgusting. But that's what Ryan Reese supports. That is the discretion of Ryan Reese, the co-founder of the Whosoever's Movement, the Whosoever's Movement that is promoted by, by Brian Broderson and Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa. So here's, uh, here's Ryan at his father's church, Raul Reese, Somebody Loves You Radio, of course. Uh, there's a bunch of Eli's sons uh, running amok through the Calvary Chapel movement, as we'll see shortly. This applies to many of them. Uh, Greg Laurie's son, John, it, it's a family business at this point. Greg Laurie, who's a Calvary Chapel affiliate and has been for years, uh, his son, Jonathan Laurie, is now a pastor. Uh, Raul Reese's son, Ryan, is now a pastor. Uh, John Corson, a guy I used to listen to, his son, Ben Corson, now a pastor and part of the Hillsong uh, channel and Hillsong Network. Uh, Skip Heitzig's son, Nate Heitzig, now a pastor. It, it's it's a family enterprise. It's a family business. This is just nepotism in its most shameless and disgusting form. Um, Somebody Loves You Radio. Stay the course, of course. They've got uh, this West Coast Pastors and Leaders Conference. And Ryan Reese is one of the speakers. Why? Well, because of nepotism, that's why. Because it's Rawls' son, and he's got to be there. So you've got guys, Mike McIntosh, David Rosales, Joe Folkt, Don McClure, right? A lot of uh, names that have been associated with Calvary Chapel for years are, are there. Nobody cares. Nobody cares that this guy is is promoting gross ecumenism and what can only be described as silliness at best. Absolutely ridiculous. But he's Raul Reese's son, and names carry weight in Calvary Chapel. That's unfortunate. Uh, wrote David Rosales hosted Raul Reese at his church in, uh, what is it, Calvary Chapel, Chino, Chino Valley or Chino Hills. I forget which one is which. One of them is Jack Hibbs' church, and the other one is David Rosales. But that's unfortunate. I used to know David Rosales' mother personally. She was a lovely woman. Lovely woman that I prayed with personally. Um, but to see this lack of discretion... And uh, the business of business unfold is is heartbreaking. And uh, that's an understatement. Well, Ryan Reese and Raul Reese, all right, what, what motivates all of this lack of discretion? Well, one, one could take a guess. Here's an article published by this website, The Phoenix Preacher. Raul rakes it in. This is from 2015. What do they mean, Raul rakes it in? Well, they mean Rawl makes, gosh, over $450,000 a year. That's what they mean. Rawl rakes it in. I don't know if you can see this right here. I'll zoom in a little bit more. But top line, Rawl Reese, president, $394,000 as his regular compensation and nearly a $65,000 bonus. Um, his wife down here pulling in a cool sixty grand, uh, But not bad. Nearly a half a million dollars to Raul Reese every year. And um, if you don't want to jeopardize that, you maintain the status quo. You don't rock the boat. You don't cause too much division. You don't want to alienate your audience. Perhaps that could be something of a motivating factor. Raul Reese, nearly $500,000 a year. Uh, as you can see, this is a 990 document. Uh, and this is the twenty. This is from 2013. Okay. Calvary Chapel Association, right? These are again supposed to be the good guys. Calvary Chapel Association 2019 coming up in February. We are less than a month away, or almost exactly a month away now. Two, 2019 LA Pastors Conference. Okay. 
who is going to be at the Pastors Conference, LA Pastors Conference, again, promoted by the Calvary Chapel Association. Let's check it out. We've got Greg Laurie. We've got David Guzik. We've got Jack Hibbs. And we've got John Stewart. Sorry, Don. Don Stewart. John Stewart is a unfunny comedian. Uh, anyway, these are the four that we're going to focus on. Probably much could be said about the others. But this is a Calvary Chapel Association, Association promoted conference. Jack Hibbs, one of the leaders of the Calvary Chapel Association, one of the council members. David Guzik, popular name. Don Stewart and Greg Laurie, who has been a longtime friend and affiliate of Calvary Chapel, was saved under the ministry and tutored by Chuck Smith as a youngster. So that's what we got going on here at this conference coming up. These men are all friends. They're all partners. They're all colleagues. They promote each other. All right, let's get back to Brian Broderson from Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. Among other things, he's a friend and a lover of Rick Warren, exactly the warning that we saw from Steve Shively, one of the men that is being promoted, embraced, and partnered with. So here's Brian Broderson on his pastor's perspective. Uh, actually, no, sorry, this is Things That Matter, introducing his friend. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Things That Matter. I'm in the studio today with Pastor Rick. Rick Warren and Rick, I am so it's delighted to, you, to have you. Really, it's fun. Thanks for. I've been watching this. I've been watching uh, several episodes of your yeah. show here. I think it's, it's. You've had some great conversations. Yeah. Well, Insightful words from Rick Warren, the man that says, "If you love Pope Francis, you'll love Jesus." Nice. The man that says uh, you should partner with other religions to usher in world peace. Uh, Rick Warren is an ecumenist extraordinaire. Rick Warren is a friend of Oprah. Rick Warren is a friend of anybody that will have him. And Rick Warren is quite simply a heretic. Brian Broderson is a friend of Rick Warren's. Not merely a friend. Gosh, he loves the guy. He's had him on four separate segments of his Things That Matter. Here's just the Hi, second welcome one. welcome to this episode of Things That Matter. I'm Brian Broderson. It's great to be with you today. And it's great to have my friend Rick Warren back you, Brian. in the studio. Uh, for yeah. Saddleback is back. Saddleback <laughs> is back, right. Hey, another zinger from Rick Warren. Saddleback is back. Too much that he doesn't put more effort into biblical truth. No, um, it, it's all about presentation and it's all about perception with these guys. So uh, Rick Warren uh, frequently has New Age mystics on, on the platform with him. He'll partner with, with whoever, right? He... Uh, he, he was invited to the Vatican and thanked Pope Francis incessantly for the invitation. And uh, Rick Warren is an ecumenical danger to all things biblical. He should be avoided at all costs. He should be rebuked publicly. But Brian Broderson calls him a friend and welcomes him back. That's who Brian Broderson is. That's what Steve Shively was concerned about. And this is the gangrene that is infecting and has infected Calvary Chapel for some time now. Okay, Brian Broderson, the Rick Warren loving fool, is also friends with who? Hi, and welcome to this episode of Things That Matter. I'm Brian Broderson, and it is great to be with you. And it's really great to have my friend Ryan Reese in the studio with me today, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Great to have you. <laughs> And um, we're going to have a conversation about, um, kind of about evangelism, but more... Kind of about evangelism. That'll be good. Ryan can tell him all about loving people into the kingdom of heaven. Um, again, this is the discretion or lack thereof from Ryan Reese. But it's no wonder Ryan Reese casually jokes about his friend leaving the band corn and then rejoining the band corn and loving people into the kingdom and uh, just generally being a cool guy. Now, while while it might be commendable that he's saying, oh, look at, um, I, I used to be a drug addict and now I'm not. Well, that's a pretty low standard for biblical truth. Simply getting sober doesn't mean you got saved. I know atheists who got sober and maintained their atheism. 
right? Behavioral modification alone is not the goal. Jesus will, in fact, save people from their sins. But somebody cannot be a drug addict and still be a, a, a moral derelict. Um, there, uh, David Hume, I suspect, was not a drug addict. Um, that had no bearing on his salvation, right? There's a, there's a, that's a very low standard for what constitutes being saved biblically and what walking biblically looks like. It will include not being a drug addict, uh, but that certainly is not the, the barometer for whether or not somebody's a Christian. But because he, you know, tells kids not to do drugs, that's supposed to be some su- kind of substitute for the gospel. He just loves them into the kingdom. While he attends these debauched con- concerts with his friend, he goes to the corn concerts and pretends it's an evangelistic crusade. But they're all partnered up, and you're going to see this, right? Ryan Reese is the son of Raul Reese, who's supposed to be on this side of Calvary Chapel. Brian Broderson is supposed to be the bad guy on this side of Calvary Chapel, and already you can see they're linking up pretty tightly. They're friends. Of course they're friends. Uh, here's another, uh, this is from the Calvary Chapel uh, Facebook page, I guess, uh, from Brian Broderson. Um, you can see this conference uh, from June of 2018. David Guzik and Brian Broderson. Remember, remember the conference over here. Jack Hibbs, Don Stewart, Greg Laurie, and David Guzik. Who's David friends with? With Brian. They're partners. They're good friends. David Guzik and Brian Broderson, the the uh, apostate uh, Rick Warren embracer, is friends and partners with David Guzik, a name some of you may have heard. I think he's got a few commentaries out there or something. Anyway, um, let's go back to Brian Broderson's uh, Things That Matter. Hi, and welcome to this episode of Things That Matter. I'm Brian Broderson, and it's great to be with you today. And I am really excited to have my friend David Guzik in the studio with me today. David. Hey, Brian. Great to have you. Thanks for having um, me. Of course, we've been trying to get you in here. Okay, that'll work. Uh, they're friends. They're friends. You got Rick Warren on one day. You got David Guzik on another day. You got Ryan Reese on one day. Uh, it's... They're all connected. Despite this apparent rift and split, the same guys are still connected. Jack Hibbs' friend, uh, David Guzik, partners with Brian Broderson. We'll get into the rest of them just shortly. So those are things that matter. Apostatizing is what matters to Brian Broderson. Now, who else did we have uh, on the list there? We had, uh, we had Greg Laurie, right? Very popular name, very popular evangelist, Harvest Crusade, SoCal, uh, Harvest, the whole nine. Um, invited to the White House, uh, friends with Jack Graham, right? Um, he wrote a book about Steve McQueen. Um, Greg Laurie's trying to realize his dreams of being a rock star. He's finally managed to do it. And so... Let's start here with uh, CBN. Again, no big shocker. Remember, Ryan Reese was uh, was on uh, CBN, uh, given his testimony about loving people into the kingdom. Let's listen to uh, Matt and Lori Crouch, right? Uh, Son of Paul and Jan. Remember those those two? And we've come up with a new term with our friend Leon Fontaine, Spirit Contemporary. We want everything Mm -hmm. about TBN to remain faithful to the roots uh, and just let it represent, you know, what it is in our generation. What's going to happen with Hillsong? They, I, I love their music, uh, you know. Uh, you love Hillsong music? Oh, sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. So do it, a it, lot it, of people. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're wonderful <laughs> people. Yes. And, uh, but you, you, you're going to have a, 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 like a music channel 24 hours a day? Is it music? Or? Well, I think it would feel more like going to a Hillsong conference. Uh-huh, okay. uh, a lot of speakers, a lot of music, and, and that kind of stuff. So the, the Hillsong brand, 50 million people this weekend in church will sing Hillsong music Are you globally. Serious? 50 that, million. Yeah. And so we just saw that it was time for them to have... Uh, an entire channel, mm-hmm. and we've made that happen. They're on 11 satellites around the world from day one, 
65 million viewers in America alone. Fantastic. So we're just wanting to make a way for uh, that expression, you know, a new yeah. expression. And Pastor Brian has fathered so many amazing mm -hmm. uh, ministries around the world now. There's Hillsong churches in oh, kind yeah. of countries, well, you know. Here, great yeah. churches, wonderful friends. Yes, and They're the there. preachers that are coming out yeah. of Hillsong are just amazing. So we're thrilled well, they that jam that's in people because people love that worship and yes. they really do but yeah. uh, well y your mother just passed away and I so they couldn't gush enough over hillsong and, and the preachers she says are just amazing coming out of there uh, those preachers would include people like carl lentz who uh biff it on whether or not homosexuality is a sin whether or not abortions a sin uh, this guy's more wrapped up in in being a celebrity and achieving rock star status, then he is truth, right? Leather jackets are more important to him than biblical truth, which is why he often says that people should read the message. Why should you read the message by Eugene Peterson? Well, uh, because it's it's a it's a biblically gutted translation, and in fact, no translation at all. A, a paraphrase isn't even. Uh, the right word for it. It's it's just it's just a work of deception is what it is. But anyway, they said it well it's about time. It was about time to give Hillsong their own channel. Why? Well because fifty million people are gonna sing their songs. What's this about? It's about money. Hillsong has sold, gosh, probably close to twenty million albums worldwide at this point. It was probably sixteen million a couple years ago. So of course TBN these people represent TBN on CBN six of one half dozen of the other and uh the crouches are now uh have a hillsong channel on tbn it was about time and gosh they're just so amazing and they just can't get enough of brian houston the man that says christians and muslims serve the same god worship the same god the man that uh, wrote a book called you need more money so that's what they're doing on cbn with tbn okay that's who that's who the crouches are let's let's continue Let's, let's go to the Crouch's own program on TBN. Who do we have here? Oh, Greg and Kathy Laurie. Ooh, the video timed out. That is not what, uh, that's not what we wanted. Nevertheless, you saw Greg. Well, let's see if I can, see if I can catch it again. All right. Started. Well, I think that we just need to remember that, you know, as followers of Jesus, we've been given our marching orders by Christ. That's why we call it the Great Commission and not the Great Suggestion, right? Yeah. Jesus did not say that the whole world should go to church, but he did say the church should go to the whole world. Yeah. And, you know, so. Oh, yeah. He's commanded us. It's a group of people that live on go. cliches. You know, line, so you got. That Jesus is in this studio tonight. We're going to be talking about him all night. So there's Greg Laurie on TBN with the Crouches, uh, promoting promoting what? Uh, probably a new book, probably the Harvest Crusades. It's it's like a talk show circuit uh, for the world. They, they're promoting but something. I didn't know what it was a promise of. But that's what Greg Laurie's up to these days. Remember uh, Greg Laurie over here with Jack Hibbs? That's right. So Greg Laurie on the uh, TBN network. Okay, here's who else the Crouches love to host. And now, Matt and Lori Crouch. We are with Pastor Bill Johnson of Bethel right here. Bill Johnson. The entire hour, we're talking about healing. Yes. Get us started, Bill. What are we going to be unpacking for the next one hour? I'd like to talk a bit about this, the concept of the testimony. So there's Bill Johnson on the same program that Greg Laurie was on just before. Uh, for those of you that don't know who Bill Johnson is, Bill Johnson is a crazy person and a charlatan, and a profiteer, and just an out-and-out -out liar. Bill Johnson was the man that was influenced by John Wimber back in the early 80s. The Signs and Wonders, the guy that Chuck Smith kicked out of Calvary Chapel. Bill Johnson was his protege. Bill Johnson saw John, John Wimber at some conference and said he was influenced by him more than any other person, and out, out came the, um, the heretical baby of Bethel, church in Redding, California that ended up spawning Jesus culture uh, music. Bill Johnson says he sees angel feathers. He claims gold dust falls from the ceiling 
Uh, he sees glory clouds. He's a general liar. He's into signs and wonders and this whole healing thing, and he's part of what's known as the New Apostolic Reformation. Uh, Bill Johnson was among a group of men who prophesied over Todd Bentley, the convicted pedophile, uh, saying that he was going to lead this new great revival. And no sooner had they prayed for him than within a few days, Todd Bentley left his wife, ran off with the secretary, and... Uh, I think other men included in that would be Rick Joyner, who, among other things, uh, part of Daystar Television Ministries, is also part of a group called the Knights of Malta. Story for another time. Uh, but there you go. Greg Laurie on TBN with the Crouches. Bill Johnson, the heretic, on TBN with the Crouches. That's what Greg Laurie is up to these days. Oh, but wait. They invited Greg Laurie back for more. They love Greg Laurie. Kind of what's your takeaway, Greg? This is that's a great setup. What's your takeaway here? August two eighteen, harvest is coming up. What's your takeaway from all this? That's my happened? my takeaway is, look how far our culture has gone. We're now just holding up a Bible as offensive to people, and, and to me, it's insane because you think of the impact of the Bible on America. You know what's more insane, Greg? It's more insane that you don't see how offensive this display is to God. Here he is on what can only be described as the network of heresy. TBN is home to Joyce Meyer. TBN is home to Joel Osteen. TBN is home to T.D. Jakes. TD, TBN is home to the prosperity gospel, quote-unquote. Prosperity heresy lives at TBN. And that's where Greg Laurie's at these days, peddling his books, peddling his events, and saying, well, it's, it's just amazing that people are offended that you're just holding up a Bible. I agree, that is, it is amazing. A sad testament to how far our society's gone, an even worse testament to how far the church has gone that this is somehow acceptable. Tell me, Jack Hibbs, why are you partnering with Greg Laurie? Why? You're supposed to have... I used to listen to Jack Hibbs. I've heard good things from Jack Hibbs. Why is he partnering with Greg Laurie? Could it be that the same mindset of the Crouches with respect to Hillsong is the same mindset with some of these guys? I mean, Greg Laurie's a big name. He's a big draw. You know, maybe it's time for him to have his own channel. So... Greg Laurie, now a friend of the Crouches, at least he's been on their program a couple of times. Here he is on a program called Le Let's Talk with Brian Houston. There they are shaking hands. Brian Houston, the uh, word of faith heretic that uh, started or at least ran with the Hillsong movement that he took over for his pedophile father, Frank Houston. That's who... Greg Laurie is teaming up with these days. Let's take a little listen to a podcast interview they did with each other. Well, I think what you do is incredible. Thank you. How do you get so many Christians and churches to cooperate? Yeah, it's challenging. That's the hardest <laughs> part, honestly. Um, so our objective is A, to get them to talk together, then B, get them to pray together, and C, get them to work together. That's not easy. But, you know, sometimes you'll hear something about someone else and and you'll think a certain thing about them, but it's different when you meet a person. Yeah. And even if you have a theological difference with yeah. them, when you meet them eye to eye, and you go, well, you know what, I really like that guy, you know? Yeah. It changes everything. There's an old country preacher, his name is Vance Havner, and he said, if we're too busy using our sickles on each other, we'll miss the harvest. Yeah, that's good. And we have our differences, but I like that saying, uh, in essentials, unity, and non-essentials, liberty, yeah. and all things, charity or love. And so why shouldn't we join forces and bring the gospel together? Yeah. Amen. Why shouldn't you join forces? Hmm. Uh, because Brian Houston is a heretic? Maybe. Maybe that's why you shouldn't join forces. Maybe because verses like 2 John 11 tell you not to. Maybe because verses like Romans 16, 17 tell you not to. Maybe because you're told not even to have the appearance of evil. Maybe that's why. You see the uh, the little quote that he issues there from Vance Havner, if we're too busy using our sickles on each other, presupposes that each other are the same. 
presupposes that you're both of the same mind. Amos 3.3, 3, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? So, no, you don't use a sickle on, on other Christians, but you certainly use the sword of the Spirit on false doctrine. But what's emerging here is the unfortunate reality that Greg Laurie is of the same mind as these heretics. It's not just the crouches on TBN that promote Bill Johnson, Joyce Meyer, Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, Jakes, etc. It's Hillsong's own Brian Houston that Greg Laurie is happy to be with. And then goes on to talk about how he gets people to partner with each other. Even Brian Houston marvels at his ability to, to usher in ecumenism. What else is Greg Laurie up to? Greg Laurie will promote anything and anyone that ultimately helps him. Tonight I have the director of that film, Academy Award winning director and actor and actor. Let's welcome Mel Gibson to the Harvest Crusade. Mel Gibson. Thank you. Thanks, Greg, for asking me to come along Thank here. You, Mel. Honored to be here and honored to be here. Uh, notice he said, thanks, Greg, for asking me to come on here. Greg Laurie invited Mel Gibson. Why? Well, because what's going to draw a crowd more than the name of Mel Gibson? Now, I can admit Mel Gibson's a fine actor. He's a great actor, right? Um, and arguably a great director. What's he doing at this event, at the Harvest Crusade? Well, first of all, he's promoting... A, a new movie that he had at the time called Hacksaw Ridge. That's why Greg Laurie invited him. That's largely what they talked about because there was some kind of Christian theme. Here's the problem. Mel Gibson is a professed and outspoken Catholic. Professed and outspoken Catholic. So they talk about these vague terms and general terms of faith and God and uh, Greg Laurie just gives every distinct impression that uh, Mel Gibson is a fellow believer. Now, while you should pray for Mel Gibson's salvation, reassuring him that he is safe while believing in false doctrine is not the way to do it, Greg Laurie. That's not love. That's self-love, which is tantamount to hatred for this other person. You're going to make him comfortable believing a false gospel? a sacramental gospel. That's what you're going to make him feel comfortable in while you're helping him promote his movie just so you can sell tickets and sell seats and I'll do it all under the guise of reaching the lost. Well, we're just doing this. All. We, we want to fill as many seats as we can so we can get them with the gospel. And, and then also uh, tacitly say to them that being Catholic is okay. Well done, Greg. Well done. That's who... Uh, that's who Jack Hibbs is partnering with here. Let's continue. What else is Greg Laurie up to? Greg Laurie, Harvest Christian Fellowship, joins the Southern Baptist Convention. Kind of a big announcement. Uh, now, he's long time uh, been affiliated with uh, the Calvary Chapel movement, but wasn't officially a Calvary Chapel, and then announced that, uh, that they decided to join the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, this Southern Baptist Convention right here, this Southern Baptist Convention that had uh, just a few years ago at its pastor's conference, Rick Warren, Francis Chan, and James McDonald. Isn't that, isn't that lovely? The ecumenical Rick Warren, the new apostolic reformation recruit and friend of Mike Bickle, Francis Chan, and James McDonald, the apparent gambling addict who's got his church in debt to the tune of hundreds of thousands or millions uh, who was breathing lawsuits against uh, of libel against people who dared to write about him. Also a friend of Mark Driscoll, etc., etc. A man that loves Stephen Furtick, etc., etc. The Southern Baptist Convention is, is such a massive problem all on its own. Stay tuned. Very likely the next installment of the Apostasy Report will be covering the Southern Baptist Convention itself. Much to be said. But that's what Greg Laurie's up to. The Southern Baptist Convention, uh, as one of its branches, has the Ethics and uh, Religious Liberties Commission headed by a man named Russell Moore. 
A man named uh, this guy, Russell Moore, helps build mosques. Um, he is a proponent, a proponent of Marxist ideology. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a businessman with no love for the truth. That's what Greg Laurie is up to. Let's continue. K-Wave radio station. Let's go back to K-Wave. Brian Broderson. Brian Broderson of Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. Pastor's Perspective. Live Monday through Friday, five days a week. Who? Brian Broderson and Don Stewart. Well, that name looks familiar. Where did I see that name before? Oh, that's right. Don Stewart here partnering with uh, Jack Hibbs. Right? At the Calvary Chapel Association promoted uh, uh, L.A. Pastors Conference. Don Stewart, recognized as uh, something of an apologist for years within the Calvary Chapel movement, is the right-hand man of Brian Broderson. He is 50% of the pastor's perspective, answering your biblical questions. Um, well, let's look at K-Wave uh, for a second. If we scroll down here, if you can see this, I'm not sure if you can see this. We are holy. We are a wholly owned ministry of Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. K-Wave is owned by effectively this man right here, Brian Broderson, and Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, and Don Stewart works for them. Don Stewart works for the man who promotes Rick Warren. That is the discretion of this so-called apologist, Don Stewart. Let's take a look at some of their radio programs. This is K-Wave's radio program that was founded by Chuck Smith. So, of course, they have uh, Chuck Smith's old programs on there. Let's look at some of the names we got. Of course, Greg Laurie, right? Greg Laurie's a good friend. James McDonald, big surprise there. Tony Evans, a guy who is all but affirmed of Glenn Beck to be a Christian. Skip Heitzig of Calvary Albuquerque. We'll get to him shortly. Of course, Brian Broderson. John Corson, whose son Ben is now part of the Hillsong uh, network, or has got his uh, own little channel on the Hillsong channel. Um, Alistair Begg, Alistair Begg, I believe he's a council member of the Gospel Coalition, very popular within reform circles. Uh, J. Vernon McGee, old preacher, I've listened to a lot of J. Vernon McGee. Wow, look who you have right after J. Vernon McGee, 9.30 a.m. and at 10, Rick Warren. J. Vernon McGee would vomit if he saw that Rick Warren was following him in any sort of radio program. That's what K-Wave promotes, and why? That's Brian Broderson's friend. It's his friend. In fact, anybody who's on the K-Wave radio station is not on bad terms with Brian Broderson. You can't be. You wouldn't be. He wouldn't play you on his radio station. Greg Laurie, Chuck Swindoll, Jim Daly, Focus on the Family, obviously big uh, popular station. James Dobson, Family Talk. Who else do we have here? Let's keep going. Jack Graham. Jack Graham is a friend of T.D. Jakes and Greg Laurie. David Jeremiah. Um, lots could be said here. Um, David Jeremiah was, uh, was among people praying for uh, Donald Trump with a whole host of uh, false teachers arm in arm. Brian and Cheryl Broderson. Tony Clark. There we go. Ben Corson. There you go. There's John Corson's son, Ben, who's also on the Hillsong channel. And then, oh, what do you know? We got Rick Warren on twice. Twice in the whole day, you, you got Rick Warren on. Uh, gosh, do you even have Chuck Smith on twice? I think Chuck Smith's name is only on here one time. There's Chuck Smith at noon. Did I Did I miss something? Nope, sure didn't. They've got Rick Warren on the radio program twice. That is K-Wave. That is Brian Broderson and Don Stewart. Remember, Jack Hibbs' friend, Don Stewart. You'll see just how closely acquainted they are very shortly. Um, all right, there's Brian and Greg again. Uh, who else did we see on here? We saw uh, Skip Heitzig, right? Skip Heitzig, right? On friendly terms, enough to be on K-Wave. Not, not so surprising. Here's the Calvary Albuquerque website, and let's see what Skip Heitzig has to say. In the original version of this video, I played this clip from Calvary of Albuquerque's website. Now, this is potentially one of the clips that uh, may have led to Skip Heitzig and Calvary Church in Albuquerque filing a copyright claim. In this clip, 
Skip is uh, simply introducing Levi Lusco. This is the weekend of generosity. It is a very common practice for megachurch pastors to bring in outsiders when they want to talk about money. So in this clip, he introduces his good friend, uh, Levi Lusco, who uh, was formerly employed at Calvary Chapel. Um, as you can see, here's a picture of the video that I did responding to this. There's Levi Lusco. Skip said, uh, a homecoming welcome. Why did he say that? Well, Levi Lusco's father, Chip, Chip Lusco, was a former pastory, uh, sorry, pastor at Calvary, uh, at Calvary Albuquerque. His background is in radio, so he helped found the KNKT radio program in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, I used to know uh, Levi's younger brother, Jesse, personally, right? His family is there. That's why it's a homecoming. Uh, he has ties to Calvary Chapel. For those of you that don't know, Levi Lusco started a church called Fresh Life Church out in Montana. I think it was previously known as Skull Church, and uh, uh, which was a nice roundabout way of alluding to Calvary, Golgotha. Uh, but anyway, it was more hip and cool to call it Skull Church. Who is Levi Lusco? For those of you that don't know, what is Calvary promoting? And by the way, this was just this was recently um, that within the last six months that he was there. Here is Stephen Furtick, prosperity, uh, the new wave, the new generation of sp prosperity heresy. Uh, Stephen Furtick, among other things, says that uh, T.D. Jakes is the uh, greatest preacher of our time. That's what he says. Uh, he also said to his church, and I use the term loosely, that um, if you attend this church every week, and whether you know it or not, T.D. Jakes is the man that feeds your soul. Why does he say that? Well, because he mimics T.D. Jakes. He loves him. T.D. Jakes is a, a modalist, trinity-denying heretic, uh, who, among other things, is um, friends with the world. Tyler Perry, he's a big, charismatic, uh, you know, motivational speaker. That's Stephen Furtick's inspiration. Now listen. Would you stand to your feet and give some elevation-style love to God's man from Montana, Pastor Levi Lusco. Come on, y'all, show him some love. Elevation. You guys could take a seat. It is an absolute incredible honor for me to be here to be a part of what God's doing at Elevation. Um, it would be impossible for me to verse so much from, from Elevation Church. Our team has Christ through Fresh Life who are Appreciation Month. And, uh, and so I, I came from Montana to, to appreciate your pastor and appreciate you, Holly. And on behalf of my wife, who will, um, who will kill me if I don't, I'll just say thank you, thank you, thank you for your leadership, your example, and most of all, your friendship. And you mean the world to us. You're making a difference. And I hope that not one person who's ever darkened the doorways of this. He just spends a whole lot of time fawning over Stephen Furtick. Thank you for your example. Uh, I believe Stephen Furtick had a $1.6 million mansion built. Nice, godly example. And uh, Levi Lusco is following suit. Already has had a couple of books out, Through the Eyes of a Lion, and another one called Swipe Right or whatever, Swipe Left, or um, some some book that's about modern, trying to incorporate modern social media. Because he's cool. He's a cool guy. He's got a leather jacket to prove it. Um, this is who Levi Lusco is. He's good friends with Stephen Furtick. He's great friends with Carl Lentz of Hillsong Church as well and welcomed into Calvary Chapel. Now, one thing I didn't mention here, right? It just, Skip Heitzig introduced him for Generosity Weekend. This is a common tactic uh, that you should be aware of. Anytime they want to give a message about giving, very often they will invite a guest speaker in and go somewhere else so they don't have to feel the weight of that, so that they can distance themselves from guilt-tripping people to give them money. So they'll bring a guest speaker in, to talk about generosity while they're gone so they can come back 
And of course, before this even came up, they talked about all the money they donated. And this is what we've been able to do this year with your help. So thank you for your generosity. It's all a ploy. It's a ploy to keep this massive enterprise afloat. This same massive enterprise spent $6.25 million on salaries and benefits uh, in the year of 20. 2016 or 2017, something comparable this year as well, 6.25 million on salaries and benefits. Anyway, just as a side note, so Levi Lusco, good friend and very grateful for the leadership and inspiration of Stephen Furtick. Uh, who's cooler than Stephen Furtick? Here is Stephen Furtick's Code Orange revival just uh, recently, last year, the year before. Let's see here. God knew we needed to go into the second half of revival strong. So he brought us a preacher all the way from Montana. His wife's name is Jenny. He's a great man of God, my brother in Christ. Welcome to the stage for night six of Code Orange Revival. Pastor Levi Lasco. Church, church, anybody about to miss out on it. I was at the first uh, Code Orange revival in 2012. Who was here? 2012, Code Orange. I'll tell you what, when I came to that event, um, I came across the country just because I knew what God was doing here in, in Charlotte. I needed to have in my heart, I needed to have experience and, and be a part of and just witness these things. So I got a plan on a plane and, and started out 2012 as right. Yeah, he needed inspiration. He needed to follow this tried and proven business model, right? He needed inspiration for uh, being as, as cool as he could be. This is the Code Orange revival. Who else was on stage that night or, or, or in that session uh, at Code Orange with Levi Lusco? Here you go. You must have done something right that tonight you get to hear Joyce Meyer preach the Bible. Are you kidding me? The greatest Bible teacher alive today came to Elevation Church, Code Orange Revival. That's right. He just called Joyce Meyer the greatest Bible teacher alive today. This is baffling new york times best-selling author written over a hundred books i know this must be revival because god doesn't send joyce meyer just anywhere would you welcome to the stage the one and only joyce meyer can you hear me <laughs> That's who Levi Lusco partners with. That's what Levi Lusco is about. That is his inspiration for ministry. If you can't see the patently absurd, worldly and fleshly nature of this whole spectacle, I can't help you. This is beyond ridiculous. It's a hype job, and guess what? He learned well from people like T.D. Jakes, but he brought even more ostentation into it. This is... This is all. This is a massive con job. The whole thing. You will not hear sound doctrine. You will hear appeal to experience. You will hear self help. You will hear a ton about self love, not selflessness, but selfishness. From a woman who's had more plastic surgery than the whole Kardashian family. Vanity. It's a big exercise in vanity, and charlatanism. Uh, Stephen Furtick also linked up closely with the Hillsong uh, movement. Joyce Meyer spoken at the Hillsong conferences. So is Stephen Furtick. They're all friends. That's who Levi Lusco is. That's who is a part of the Calvary Chapel circuit. He's a protege of Greg Laurie. Levi Lusco and Greg Laurie are very close. But that's who Levi's preaching with these days. Joyce Meyer, the prosperity heretic. There's Skip Heitzig, the pastor of Calvary Chapel in Albuquerque. You go to his uh, his website, connect with Skip, and scroll down here, Dish Network, or online at hillsong.com channel. That's right. 
the Hillsong channel has now adopted Skip Heitzig. You don't just get to be on the Hillsong channel. You have to accept it. Most people are vying for it. So Skip Heitzig goes to Facebook and says, watch Connect on the Hillsong channel at 4.30 Mountain Time. Promoting Hillsong. Promoting apostasy. If you go to the Hillsong channel, scroll around in here, down here. Oh, there you go. There's Skip Heitzig. Uh, two, two people down is Joel Osteen. Skip Heitzig, two people down, Joel Osteen. You got Jack Graham, Gentizen Franklin, Christine Kane, uh, Elevation. There's uh, Creflo Dollar, uh, David Jeremiah, Turning Point, Joyce Meyer. Some of these are the most notorious prosperity heretics known. It's almost laughable. Joseph Prince, uh, there you go, Potter's House with T.D. Jakes. Uh, who else we got here? RZIM, yep, Ravi Zacharias, big fan and, and promoter of Hillsong these days. John Gray, former pastor of, uh, uh, associate pastor at uh, Lakewood Church, just bought his wife a Lamborghini recently. Nothing, nothing is shocking about this. That's what these people do. That's what they've always done. They're a bunch of charlatans and profiteers. But... You have Calvary Chapels now being embraced here. Uh, here's uh, Robert Morris also gave the stamp of approval on Glenn Beck, the outspoken Mormon. Daniel Fusco, another Calvary Chapel pastor right there, Daniel Fusco. Of course, there's James McDonald. Um, I don't see it on here at the moment, but Ben Corson, John Corson's son, is somewhere on the uh, Hillsong uh, channel. Even got Billy Graham TV on here. How about that? Uh, the Hillsong channel is really just taking over everything. Um, so that's where Skip Heitzig is these days. Why? Well, because the inmates are running the asylum. And his son, Nathan, is the um, executive creative director. They have all kinds of fanciful new titles these days. But effectively, it, it boils down to the second wave of Calvary kids are off the rails. Raul Reese's son, John Corson's son, Greg Laurie's kids, never mind his kids, Greg Laurie himself, you know, never mind Skip's kids, Skip himself. He's the one on here. As Eli had the power to restrain his sons but did not, and so God's judgment fell on him, 1 Samuel, through, what was it, 1 Samuel 3? So these men have the power to restrain the nonsense that's being suggested to them, but they don't. They go headlong into it and are heaping up judgment for themselves. Daniel Fusco, who's this guy? Well, he is a friend of David Guzik. Remember Brian Broderson's friend? Jack Hibbs' friend? It was the guy with the crazy dreadlocks playing bass, <laughs> guitar. He's actually going to preach to us this morning, and it's a good friend of mine. A man named Daniel Fusco, who's the pastor of a church in Vancouver, Washington, right across the river from Portland. And uh, he's a pastor of Crossroads Church there in Vancouver. And um, it's a good I friend love of his. Daniel. I appreciate him so much. Loves him. Appreciate him. Because it. he loves Jesus. He mm. loves God's people. But I'll tell you what else. He has a way. I'll tell you what else. Uh, Daniel loves himself. How do I know that? Well, because... You must love yourself in order to promote the waywardness of something like Hillsong. Hey, Hillsong family. Pastor Daniel here from The Real with Daniel Fusco TV show. I love getting to share with you what God is teaching us here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest of the United States. We love seeing ourselves right in the middle of what God is doing as we seek to transform our community and our world together. So let's do it together. Join me on Friday nights right here on the Hillsong channel. I'll see you there. Promoting Hillsong happily, not a care in the world. That is David Guzik's friend. David Guzik, the partner of Jack Hibbs and Greg Laurie and Don Stewart and so on and so forth. That's who Daniel Fusco is. Back to Calvary of Albuquerque with Skip Heitzig. There's Ryan Reese at his wake-up tour in uh, November of 2017. You can scroll through here and see Ryan Reese having a good old time, just loving people into the kingdom. That's what Ryan Reese is doing, whosoever's. Uh, who else was there? Who else was there that week? This is the second clip that potentially Calvary Church and Skip Heitzig used as a means of filing a copyright claim against the original video. 
In this video was shown an eight-second clip of Chris Kilala of Jesus Culture leading them in worship, followed by Skip's son, Nate Heitzig, introducing Chris Kilala and saying uh, that they're very glad that he's here. Chris Kilala is uh, one of the front men for Jesus Culture, the band that is uh, under the direct leadership and inspiration of Bill Johnson of Bethel Church in Redding, California. Bill Johnson's immediate protege, a man named Banning Leibischer, is the head or director of Jesus Culture now. And, um, but but they're, they're all under the bigger umbrella of Bethel Church in Reading. So, like Hillsong, they're capable of writing catchy songs that people like, and every now and then you might hear a good lyric, uh, which is only a lure to draw you in to their abysmal and heretical theology. And that's what Calvary Chapel is promoting these days. Jesus Culture, the whosoevers, they had Hillsong, Young and Free there, Levi Lusco, anything, anything goes. Even Chuck, Chuck Smith, who was not perfect by a long shot. Uh, even a year or so before he died, you saw Chuck Smith with Rick Warren at a Greg Laurie Harvest event, no less, when Levi, Yusk, Lusk, Le Levi Lusco was a younger, lesser-known individual. <clears throat> A lot of people have said that um, Chuck Smith was getting older and was sick at the time and didn't know what he was doing. Uh, you know, granted, he was older and died shortly thereafter and apparently was on record a different time saying that he didn't agree with Rick Warren, didn't like the purpose-driven life. So it was pretty confounding. One of the things that, that Shively <clears throat> said has been creeping in. Um, now, granted, this wasn't... Um, this. You know, I, I'm not. I'm not going to sit and make a bunch of excuses. But it has been said that you know, Chuck Smith was older and and somewhat sick. Uh, nevertheless, Rick Warren started making inroads. Now, at the time, um, his his errors have only been multiplied a thousandfold since then. That was probably 2011 ish. So it's been several years now. Nevertheless, um, there's been problems growing in Calvary Chapel for some time, and, and now they're, the gangrene is full-blown. What do you have here? KNKT, which is the radio station that is uh, governed by Calvary Albuquerque, with Skip Heitzig there. <clears throat> we can go through some of their uh, programs. Also got John Corson, of course, Greg Laurie, good friend of his. There's Skip, obviously. Tony Evans. Let's see. Wait for it. 7.30, Rick Warren. Of course, we got Rick Warren on the radio station. That's right. Rick Warren's being promoted. Levi Lusco's being promoted. Jesus Culture, Hillsong, anything will do. That's what's happening with one of the leaders of the Calvary Chapel movement. Now I'm going to share a personal email. Having attended this church for several years myself, having seen uh, these things growing, uh, and having been away and, and come back, I wrote to several of the people there. Uh, one of them responded, a couple of them, a guy named Neil Ortiz and another guy named Sam Garcia sent me an email in response. Uh, this was, I think, 2016. And um, Sam Garcia is the head of their web development team, but is also a Bible study leader there. At least he was when I was there. I used to attend Bible studies with him every Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. And uh, when I raised these concerns about Levi Lusco, even a couple years back, the response to me was, um, I encourage you to look at the extremely fruitful ministries of Stephen Furtick, Carl Lentz, John Piper, Beth Moore, Christine Kane, Rick Warren, Louis Giglio, Joyce Meyer, Joel Osteen, and Brian Houston. Joel Osteen, Joyce Meyer, Brian Houston, etc., etc., called fruitful ministries. He would encourage me to look at the very fruitful ministries. He took extreme exception to what I was sharing with him, said I was just being judgmental. How dare you? How dare you? That is what is being promoted at Calvary Chapel these days. Going back to Brian Broderson here. Brian Broderson also promotes Nikki Gumbel of the Alpha uh, program uh, out there at Holy Trinity Brompton in England. What a fantastic introduction to the new Alpha film series. Good one, Nikki. That is Brian Broderson. Brian Broderson, whose right-hand man is uh, Don Stewart. If you look at some of Brian Broderson's tweets, he's got Tim Keller, the, the Marxist, 
and, and founder of the Gospel Coalition, Desiring God, headed by John Piper. Uh, who else? There's Nikki Gumbel retweeting Nippy, Nick, Nikki Gumbel. Paul David Tripp. Um, I mean, just, just all manner of, uh, of silliness is, is promoted by uh, Brian Broderson on a regular basis. Who's Brian Broderson's right-hand man on the pastor's perspective? Don Stewart, apologist extraordinaire. Now let's hear from Jack Hibbs. You guys, just to cut it short, instead of giving you all of his achievements and all of his remarkable levels of education, Don is simply a genius who loves Jesus Christ. And that's, I, I don't know how else to put it. Oh, how about this? He's been a brother of mine for over 40 years. So for that, I'm grateful. Give a warm welcome tonight to Don Stewart. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So Don, we, uh, we talked about... Don Stewart is a genius, a genius who is uh, half of the heretical ministry of Brian Broderson's pastor's perspective. Well, that's unfortunate, uh, Jack Hibbs. You should probably know better. And if he's your brother of 41 years, do you love him enough to correct him? Do you love the people of God not to subject them to him and to what they promote through him? On one episode of The Pastor's Perspective, somebody called in asking about Catholicism, and uh, uh, she said, what's the difference between Catholicism and Christianity? Brian Broderson's response was, Catholicism is Christianity. It's just a, a variant, a, a different form of it that, you know, we might not agree with all of the things about. And then he kind of critiqued it and, and just waffled. Catholicism is Christianity? No, it's certainly not Christianity. But I don't expect uh, much better of an answer from a man that calls Rick Warren his friend. Why would I? A man that promotes Nikki Gumbel in the Alpha Course. And by extension, so does Don Stewart. Don Stewart is employed effectively by Brian uh, Broderson and K-Wave. And that's, that's who Jack Hibbs promotes frequently. Galatian zones after they kicked ISIS. I remember at one time ISIS had one-third of Syria and one-third of Iraq. This is them at a different, uh, different conference. Basically said, she excited and well-educated on what is called eschatology, that is the... This is all within the last couple months. Don Stewart is a regular invitee to Jack Hibbs' church here, which is, which is not uh, terribly surprising, given that um, they're going to be doing a conference together, a pastor's conference. So you've got, you've got Don Stewart, who's the partner of Brian Broderson, right? the man from which people were reeling and saying he's really ushering in a bunch of false teaching and, and sanctioning it. Uh, then you got David Guzik, who's good friends with uh, Hillsong's new Daniel Fusco, the uh, new uh, Hillsong Channel recipient, um, who's also friends with Brian Broderson. We saw him on Things That Matter with Brian Broderson, right, in between segments with Rick Warren. That's David Guzik. And then, of course, you've got uh, Greg Laurie, who's, who, whose messes are so many, uh, it's, it's dizzying, like I said. So my question is, when we go back to these leaders, Raul Reese, the half-million-dollar man, and his son who's promoting apostasy left and right, why, Raul? Where's your discretion, Raul? And not only him, every one of these men that are council members, that are leadership, that are part of the Calvary Chapel Association, is nobody objecting to this? Does nobody have a problem with this? You still wish to, to be members of the Calvary Chapel Association? You're just turning a blind eye to this? Did you not know? Now that you know, what will you do? I find it hard to believe that you don't know these things are going on. They're not being done under a rock. This is all very public. If I can find these things, surely discerning pastors should be able to find these things, correct? Uh, am I wrong? Where are you, Jack Hibbs? Do you have nothing to say about Skip Heitzig? Skip Heitzig is a regional leader, part of the regional oversight team. He oversees a whole host of other people. And these aren't the, oh, Robert Furrow, there's another one who invites these guys to his church. And, and another one who practices nepotism. Uh, what's his son's name? Uh, it might be Chris Furrow, I forget. But of course, his son is on staff as well 
It's a family business ordeal. These guys franchise out Calvary chapels and then turn it into a family business. And not just them. The Greg Lorries of the world do it too. The James McDonald's of the world do it too. You don't have to have the banner of Calvary Chapel. These things turn into big family businesses. The only thing that qualifies somebody for biblical leadership now is a last name that coincides with the, with the last one. How utterly ridiculous. Have you guys nothing to say about this? You're okay with Skip Heitzig promoting Jesus culture and Hillsong and Levi Lusco and playing Rick Warren on the radio station? Well, why wouldn't you be? Your friend Don Stewart, Don Stewart over here, Brian Broderson's right-hand man, they, they play Rick Warren twice a day. That's what Don Stewart does. That's his friend and colleague is Brian Broderson. So what is going on at Calvary Chapel? I assure you, this is the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more to be said. Where are we at? It's almost an hour and a half. There's so much more I could say. This, this would be a five-hour video. In theory, many of the points I just hit on could be their own videos. There's so much to say about these things. And again, stay tuned for a treatment on the Southern Baptist Convention um, and, and many other things in, in weeks to come. This is the tip of the iceberg. This is what has become of Calvary Chapel. For all of the bad uh, things that have been said or could be said about Chuck Smith and some of the things that definitely happened later in his life, at least initially there was some attempt to keep some semblance of order, purging Lonnie Frisbee from Calvary Chapel, purging John Wimber from Calvary Chapel. Isn't it interesting? John Wimber purged from Calvary Chapel, gives rise to Bill Johnson, inspires Bill Johnson, who then goes off to start Bethel Church in Redding, California, that gives birth to Jesus culture. The same Jesus culture that's now being embraced by Calvary Chapel. The same people, the same theology, the same signs and wonders theology has now worked its way back into a movement that at one point sought to keep it out. Wow. And why? What is the cause of all this? Well, let's not forget that Raul Reese rakes it in. He's not the only one raking it in. I couldn't find Jack Hibbs' salary, but I bet it's a pretty penny. Now, for all the truth that Jack Hibbs has said, and again, I used to listen to a lot of these guys. John Corson? I like John Corson. But that's no excuse for his son to be running amok and has his own uh, Hillsong channel now. There's a video somewhere. Look it up. Again, I, I just, for the sake of time, I can't cover all of this. For all of the truth that Jack Hibbs has said, for all of the truth I've heard from Raul Reese, from all of the truth I've heard from uh, David Rosales, wh why are you guys still inviting Ryan Reese? A man who laughs with, with a guy who came out of the band corn and then went back like it's some big joke? Why, why are you guys inviting this? in. Why? Is it because they're popular? Is it because it draws numbers? Why are you okay with Skip Heitzig embracing and promoting Hillsong? Are you just ignorant of it? Do you have no clue what's going on around you? Is it negligence or is it fraudulence? In either case, it's terrible. But I don't think there's any way Jack Hibbs doesn't know that his friend Don Stewart is the right-hand man of the apostasy-promoting Brian Broderson. You don't know that Don Stewart is part of the pastor's perspective five days a week with Rick Warren's friend, Brian Broderson? You don't know that, Jack? Shame on you. There's probably a dozen other Calvary chapels that could be mentioned. This is a primer. Go do some digging for yourself. But these two divergent lines, Brian Broderson and the wayward Calvary Chapelites, and the Calvary Chapel Association and the Good Doctrine, these are imaginary divergences. As you've seen, they converge in a matter of time, in a matter of a conference, in a matter of an invitation. You'll invite Greg Laurie, somebody who promotes Catholics, 
Somebody who, gosh, he was on stage with Rick Warren just a couple years ago. He promotes Rick Warren just like Brian Broderson does. But Brian Broderson's, I don't know, even even a bigger fan of Rick Warren. But never mind that, Greg Laurie's on TBN now. Bill Johnson one day, Greg Laurie the next. And you're going to partner with him at a conference? Jack Hibbs? That, that's what's going on here? Raw, the, the whole leadership, what do you do? This is, We're going to tie it up here. The question comes, at what point do you leave an organization? At what point do you stop bearing with the folly and come out from among them? Right? Some people have often ushered the, the statement, well, the, the Bible never says that you should leave a church. You might have to separate from certain people, but you, you shouldn't leave a church. What do you do when the corruption has rooted itself? When the corruption is foundational, namely the leadership itself is corrupt. Has an institution ever been reformed from within? I defy you to name one. If that were possible, Martin Luther would have stayed in the Catholic Church. If that were possible, the founding fathers would have stayed uh, under the leadership of, uh, of the king. Well, why was revolution mandatory? Why was reformation from without mandatory? Because at some point, it's gangrenous and it must be cut off. You can't fix it. No amount of penicillin or antibiotics is going to fix it. When it roots itself in the very leadership itself, what are you to do? Come out from among them. An old uh, reformed author named A.W. Pink once said, It's better to read the Bible at home than to fellowship with that which his word condemns. That's better, not ideal. Certainly not ideal, but it's better. What do you do? You keep maintaining the label of Calvary Chapel because it's more marketable? You're still a part of the Calvary Chapel Association because maybe there's a few bad seeds? No, no, no. The bad seeds are at the top of the list. You're talking about the leadership of the organization itself. The leadership is not only failing to purge itself, it's, it needs to be purged. Then what do you do? Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, expose them, come out from among them, and be ye separate. There is no communion with that. What are you doing? All right, some people chose to disaffiliate. Other people, like Jack Hibbs, have chosen to continue to promote it and to partner with it. All of those things that Steve Shively uh, voiced as grievances. Why are these men being promoted, embraced, and so forth? Greg Laurie promotes all of it. He's a regular on TBN with the Crouches. Don Stewart, partner of Brian Broderson. David Guzik, friends with this Daniel Fusco and Brian Broderson. Where is the separation? Again, the tip of the iceberg, there is so much more that can be said, and I urge you, I implore you, to do some more digging. Allow this to pique your curiosity and go investigate these men for yourselves. It won't take you long, I assure you, to discover that most of these so-called sound men, right, that at one time, and in many ways do promote and embrace good things, true things, right, none of them would say, oh, you should worship Satan, of course not. That's not how apostasy works. It's more subtle than that. It's the compromising by degree, by degree, by degree. That is how apostasy takes place. They compromise a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. They make allowances. And before you know it, there's men doing things now that used to uh, decry such actions. They never would have done such things, or so you would think. But here we are. Greg Laurie, Don Stewart, David Guzik, Jack Hibbs. You got Raul Reese and his son running amok. You got Skip Heitzig and his kid running amok. You've got the inmates running the asylum is, is really what you got going on here. And it's sad. So where, what about the rest of these guys? N no, none, of, none of them have anything to say? 
See, people are scared, generally, of alienating themselves from, from their friends. Now, you shouldn't seek division if it's not necessary. But if the embrace of that is going to jeopardize truth, what did Jesus say? Whoever doesn't hate his father and mother, his brothers, his sisters, his own life also, you cannot be my disciple. If you can't stand up to your friend of 40 years for promoting error, what kind of discipleship of Christ is that? Who and what do you love? How would you stand up to your own flesh and blood family if you can't even separate yourself from a friend? Jack? It's ridiculous. It's inexcusable. And it's the gangrenous effect of compromise being allowed in little at a time, unchecked, unchecked. When it was treatable, it wasn't treated. And now it's untreatable. The leadership itself is corrupted. It's not just a few people here and there that need to be dealt with. Who will discipline the leadership? I'll tell you who. Nobody. Why? Moses. It's the Moses model. How are they going to discipline Moses? Moses has absolute authority in the Calvary Chapel. That was one of the grievances of uh, Steve Shibley there. Again, much more that could be said. We'll end it there. The point of all of this, the point of any of this, it's not exposure for the sake of exposure. It's not gloating and pointing out errors because it's fun. It's not fun. It shouldn't be fun. But if you love truth, you will hate error. And if the object, right, is Christ in us, the hope of glory, and we're to be conformed to his image. The number one attribute of God uh, spoken of in the scriptures is holiness. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Separate from, other than, different. This is not holy. These are unholy alliances. And if you love God, you will seek to purge blemishes from your life. Reconcile where you can. Save some with fear where you can. But at some point, if they won't listen, shake the dust off your feet. At some point, if they won't listen, come out from among them. There's a broad way that leads to destruction. And there are many entering into it. Until next time, God bless and Godspeed.